Hello, in this video we are going to be discussing a new concept of propulsion which has been named fluidic propulsion system. It will be utilized by an aircraft under development namely the J2000 by Jetoptera. The propulsors on this aircraft increase the thrust just by manipulating flow. This interesting method can potentially create a paradigm shift in the way we think about aircrafts and their propulsion systems. On this channel, Electric Aviation, we bring for you all the latest information from the world of sustainable air transport. Subscribe today to get all of our latest updates. In May 2018, Jetoptera, an aerospace company based in Edmonds, Washington, revealed its VTOL flying car concept, the J2000. The rendered video had one feature that stood out. There were no visible rotating components in the thrusters. Furthermore, the thrusters were not round in cross-section that we see in all aircrafts, but they were rather rectangular or more like a rotated B-shape with rounded edges. Now, many of you may point out that some of the ramjets and scramjets don't have any moving parts. They do, however, require air to be moving through them to get started. The fluidic propulsors, on the other hand, are totally different and so is their principle of operation. Jetoptera claims that its fluidic propulsion system is agnostic, that is, it can run on batteries or it can run off a gas turbine. And hence we are covering it on our channel. So let's first cover what is meant by fluidics. Well, it is a study and technique of using small interacting flows and fluid jets for functions usually performed by electronic devices. In the case of Jetoptera, its propulsion system uses compressed air and turns that into a small jet of air that is spread across the outlet. This tiny distributed jet interacts with the ambient air in such a fashion that the overall flow over the wings increases by several folds. But how is this possible? A good way to understand this is to look at the bladeless fan that was introduced by Dyson in 2009. Even though the first patent in this space was by Toshiba in 1981, but Dyson was the first to create a commercial product. It is said that the bladeless fan multiplies the air by up to 15 times. So let's have a look at how thrust augmentation or air multiplication happens. If you look at the bladeless fan, it has a small compressor that is hidden away in the stock of the fan. So the name bladeless is actually a misnomer. The blades are just on the inside rather than the outside, which has its advantages that will be revealed later. The compressor pushes the compressed air to a toroidal outlet through a tiny slit opening thus creating a narrow jet of air. This outgoing jet of air encounters a diverging surface in its path. Now fluids have a tendency to follow the profile of the surface in their proximity. This is called the Coanda effect. So the air jet, instead of flowing straight through, follows the profile of the diverging section. This creates a negative pressure in the middle of the propulsor ringo tube, which encourages air in front of the propulsor to be inducted and pulled through the hoop. This step is called air induction and it alone can bring up to 10 times more fluid in the stream than was released from the slit outlet. But there's also a second step that adds a little more air. This is called entrainment. Going by the definition, entrainment is the transport of fluid across an interface between two bodies of fluid by a shear-induced turbulent flux. Or in simple words, entrainment is when a fluid, in our case air, is pulled into an existing stream of air and cannot escape because of the circulation or vortices at the flow boundaries that trap the air. It is not that the fluid induction or entrainment technique hasn't been successfully used before in the aviation world. It has been but in a totally different application. There is a device called an aspirator that is used to fill up the evacuation slide in a passenger aircraft and works on flow induction. Note that it is extremely difficult to inflate the slide rapidly by an air pump alone and we just cannot install a massive size air pump for this purpose. So the aspirator is used which sucks air from the ambient as the compressed air jet is being pushed into the slide. And because of this, the evacuation slide inflates in a matter of seconds. 
Another application is the adductors and shifts that pump out flooded compartments. In the event of an accident, seawater is pumped to the adductor and forced through a jet and any fluid at the inlet of the adductor is carried along to the outlet and up out of the compartment. So Jet Optera simply took the Bernoulli's principle and the Quanda effect to maximize the air multiplication and utilize it as thrust in an aircraft. As a result, they claim to have developed an aircraft that improves the propulsive efficiency by 10% and fuel consumption by 50% compared to small turbojet powered planes. Jet Optera will be utilizing a gas turbine for compressed air in their different models of drones and passenger aircrafts. They have partnered with GE Aviation, which is going to supply them with the H series turboprop engine to meet the 500 pound force of thrust requirement for the Jet Optera 500 VTOL full flight demonstrator. Again, this does not mean that electric air compressors cannot be utilized. According to Jet Optera's CEO, the aircraft can easily transition to battery technology once the required energy density is available. The innovation of Jet Optera doesn't end there. It also utilizes a box wing which has its own advantages. This type of wing provides the required amount of lift in the smallest span, thus reducing the footprint and making the aircraft compact. Using box wing also eliminates tip vortices for short span wings, giving them the highest span efficiency factor of 1.45. Note that span efficiency factor is also called the Oswald efficiency number. It represents the change in drag with the lift of a three-dimensional wing or an airplane as compared with an ideal wing having the same aspect ratio and an electrical lift distribution. The high efficiency is also representative of low induced drag. The main benefit of the Jet Optera comes from the synergy of the box wing with the propulsors. Remember the shape of the propulsor? It is a rectangular shape for a reason because it tries to form the core of the box wing. Not only is the thrust distributed across the wings, but the strategic placement of the propulsor with the airframe allows more of the air to be entrained and accelerated over the wings. And due to the bladeless nature of the propulsor and clean geometry of the wing, it allows the possibility of laminar flow over the majority of the surface area of the aircraft. According to the CEO of Jet Optera, quote, all of these things work together synergistically, which is why our airframe shape is so unique. We have a box wing design with thrusters inside and a canard in the front with thrusters behind it. So the combination of thrust augmentation and lift augmentation gives rise to a pretty unique looking aircraft that's extremely compact, can do VTOL, has a smaller footprint than a helicopter, and flies a lot faster." Unquote. It has also been claimed that being efficient in flow and not having a percussive buffeting sound that you get from a blade propulsor, this aircraft will be relatively quieter. Interestingly, Thrust augmentation has been tried before in VTOL aircraft, most notably in the Rockwell XFV-12. The exhaust in that aircraft was directed through spaces in the wing that opened up like Venetian blinds to increase the available lift. Unfortunately, the aircraft's inability to meet the performance requirement terminated the program. At present, Jet Optera's strategy is to start with smaller drone-sized aircraft and gradually scale them up as more learning is achieved. So it will be some time before we see the likes of J2000 and J4000 take to the skies, but the roadmap and plans are certainly in the works. Unlike dozens of eVTOL companies that have mushroomed in recent times, the exciting aspect of Jet Optera is that it has already demonstrated the takeoff and landing of a glider-shaped wing and box wing drone using fluidic propulsion system and has also carried out successfully the VTOL of a scale model of the J2000 using electric ducted fan. It is no doubt that the J2000 is a beautifully crafted and engineered aircraft one that you really wish to be realized. We have in the past had our age-old dream of having flying car shattered several times. But maybe, just maybe, with this technology, 
that dream might come true. And with this, the video is concluded. Please do use the comment section to share your ideas about this aircraft and its technology. We have noted that the comment section of most of our videos is becoming a discussion forum which carries a wealth of information on the topic. So remember to benefit from that. If you learned something new, please do give this video a like. Thank you for your attention.